And I'm pleased now to be joined here on Locked On Ducks by my man Richie Bradshaw of Locked On Sun Devils. His inaugural appearance here on the show in a perfect time for it. Of course, you will see him again as we get closer to the 2023 season to talk about that matchup with Arizona State. We don't know the date of that yet, but we want to talk about the guy that Oregon just got in the portal from the Sun Devils, Richie. So you take our offensive coordinator. We get a linebacker back in return. I'm expecting a little draft cash compensation, you know, little little payroll stuff and maybe a second round pick in there too to, to make it fair. But um, let, let's start with what's on, I think, every Oregon's fans, the, the what's, on, what's on the mind of every Oregon fan right now. How do you pronounce this guy's name correctly? Sully, you know, Sully. like kind of like the monster from Monsters, Inc., Connor Sully. Great, first of all, elite name. I thought it was going to be like a Sowell or something, which also would have been cool, but Sully is better. I think of Sully Sullenberger, the pilot who landed the go. plane on the Hudson, saved everybody on board, but Sully from Monsters, Inc., also acceptable. What's Oregon getting here in Connor Sully? They're getting a guy who hasn't had enough opportunity, in my opinion. There were flashes in 2021 where it looked like Arizona State had five great linebackers before Gentry transferred, Darian Butler left for the NFL. And Merlin Robertson and Connor's brother Kyle Sully, who paced the Pac-12 in tackles this past year, were both back. It was expected that Connor was going to take a bigger role, but that didn't necessarily happen because Arizona State really kind of fell in love with Corey Bethley and kind of playing three defensive backs at all times to go with their two corners. So Sully didn't get as big of an opportunity as we had anticipated he was going to get heading into the year. I feel like that might have been the ultimate reason for him to transfer. Ended up ninth in tackles last year with 30 on the team, 13 solo, 17 assisted, no special stats, no sacks or turnovers or anything like that. But there were flashes in 2021 where I thought he was the superior of the two brothers and Kyle Sully ended up being very, very good this year, but I thought there were times that Connor looked really, really good. It's just been flashes in the pan. So with an opportunity with Noah Sewell heading to the NFL now for Oregon, and I know that there's been a couple other transfers throughout the defense, this is a good opportunity for Connor to step in to a situation where he can be a full-time starter, play under Dan Lanning, a Georgia defensive coordinator two years ago, and be able to finally unlock this talent that I I so firmly believe that he has. I am excited for this fit. Why do you think he didn't play more at Arizona State? I think it was a lot of scheme stuff more than anything. I know that Arizona State typically runs kind of like a 4-2-5 front, and they really liked the idea of having Corey Bethley, Chris Edmonds, and Jordan Clark on the field at all times, plus Ed Woods and Ro Torrance keeping the four defensive linemen and just leaving out Merlin Robertson and Kyle Sully, the most established linebackers. It was just one of those things where it felt like Arizona state knew the defense was kind of weak all over the place. And they wanted their most veteran players out there. Corey Bethley obviously had four years experience at Hawaii. There was a lot of experience on the defensive line. So it just kind of felt like Sully was the odd man out. I don't think it has anything to do with his playing ability and is certainly not a character concern because Connor Soley feels like a very strong locker room guy similar to his brother. What sort of athlete is he? Because Oregon also runs a 4-2-5 with Dan Lanning. That's what he ran at Georgia. It's what the Ducks did uh, this past season. Don't expect that to change. So it's a scheme, at least at some level formationally, that that he is familiar, familiar with. But a- athletically, what does he bring to the table? What, what are kind of his, his strengths? I don't know that there's anything that really stands out, and that could have been another reason. Uh, functional strength, I think he's quality for a linebacker. He doesn't have plus strength or plus speed or plus athleticism or anything like that. To me, he's a very average athlete, but he still is able to do the job that needs to be done. He can pursue ball carriers without any issue. Like It's not like he's going to be a liability in coverage or anything like that. If there is anything that it kind of comes on as a little hard for him, it's simply a lack of experience, in my opinion. And getting more playing time should be able to help him kind of figure that out, get the kinks and everything 
uh, moving again, get all the gears rolling. It's just going to be a little bit of time because he just hasn't had an opportunity to play, you know, 80% of the snaps, 90% of the snaps. It'll just be a learning curve for him. But I don't, I don't think that there's anything that really stands out and you go, wow, this dude has A, B, C, and D like you would with like a Devin White for LSU a few years ago with how fast he was to the football. There's there's not really any one characteristic that stands out with Sully, but at the same time, there's not something that stands out and you're like, ugh, this is, this is a weakness for him. Is he a special teams guy at all? To my knowledge, I think he was probably one of the guys that got out there for special teams, but I also don't know. ASU was shuffling so much on their special teams last year. They had three different return guys at different points throughout the season, and they definitely shuffled those guys around. But personally, I don't see a reason why you couldn't get him involved. I I feel like that's definitely something that he could bring to the table for you guys. In like a worst-case scenario, I feel like he could be a special teams guy. Yeah, it, it's curious when you go to the portal and add a guy who is, by all accounts, based on what you're saying, solid but not exceptional, you know, or doesn't seem like he, he has a ton of untapped potential. It, it appears that there there's some, right? But it's not like, you know, sky's the limit. He's got over-the-moon potential NFL caliber guy. It, it kind of appears almost, Richie, that he's someone who the Ducks are bringing in to add some depth to the linebacker position. And and I suspected that, that, that they would do that last week on the show. But is that what he kind of feels like to you as a transfer? Rather than a plug-and-play instant impact starter, he's a guy who is going to you know see the field, play some snaps, but maybe not be locked into a starting spot. Yeah, without knowing the Oregon Ducks depth chart at the linebacker spot, I couldn't definitively tell you if he walks in there and is an instant starter, but he is quality depth. And I mean like very good quality. Like I said, there were flashes both uh, two years ago and this past season where he looked really good. It was just one of those where Arizona State's schemes didn't have a lot of three linebacker sets and he wasn't as good as his brother and he wasn't as good as Merlin Robertson. So when there's two linebackers on the field, he's typically not one of those guys, but I really do think that there is some good potential here for him to be a quality starter. Like we said, I don't, I don't know that I see a first team all pack 12 linebacker, but I can certainly see a guy that Oregon can start for 13 or 14 or 15 games in a perfect world. Right. And he can deliver a veteran savviness and attitude to a ducks defense that again, when you're losing Noah Sewell, that's going to be difficult to replace Hopefully, Connor Soley is a step in the right direction. I'm going to be rooting for him to finally reach that potential that I think he has to be a quality starter. It's an interesting add given the the scholarship situation that Oregon is in right now where they're over a limit to add a guy via the portal who you know is going to be on, on scholarship and is not maybe the the highest ceiling of of player but it's also interesting that somehow some way this is the first time we've gotten my man Richie Bradshaw here on Locked On Ducks we talk all the time on Locked On Pac-12 but ASU and Oregon will be a little bit more intertwined this season so Duck fans treat him nicely in the comments please and thank you we will hear from him again and we appreciate you Richie taking the time to come on Absolutely. For what it's worth, Ducks fans, I I root for you guys pretty much every week as long as you're not playing Arizona State. I am definitely a bit of a Ducks fan at heart. I believe I'll I'll end it with this. I firmly, not firmly, I, I, I believe Marcus Mariota is the greatest college quarterback that I personally have gotten to see. There you go. That's all. I love you, him to pieces. Duck fans, do you need to hear anything else? No, I, I, I do not think so. Richie, until we the meet Anthony again. Thomas on also amazing. Look at this guy picking up brownie points Mamba. with Oregon fans left and right. He knows how to play the game, everybody. Thanks, Richie. Absolutely, brother.